What appeals to me about Wagner is that his music is so extraordinarily powerful and emotional, and it just gets you by the throat and takes you with him. Other composers, early composers, Handel, Mozart, who are composers who I've tended to work on before, um, have a much subtler approach, uh, and you have to work perhaps a little bit harder to get into their sound world. Wagner just grabs you from the moment. The moment you hear the opening bars of the overture of the Flying Dutchman, you're caught and involved, and all his music has this amazingly powerful quality to it. The Flying Dutchman, however, is allied to um, a very simple story, essentially a simple love story, and that it makes it even easier to get into than perhaps some of Wagner's later pieces, which tend to add um, elements of philosophy, which are slightly harder for a 21st century audience to deal with. So Tom Scutt, the designer, and I um, were really clear early on that we wanted to keep away from any kind of allegorical implication of this story. Uh, we admitted that that is probably what Wagner's intention was, that it should be read as a metaphor for how men and women should interact with each other. But we felt that um, the only conclusion from that was that women should subjugate themselves entirely to their menfolk, um, which was a story we didn't really want to tell, so we knew we had to present it in a slightly different way. And we decided that we, what we wanted to do was tell a very personal individual story about two people who, at the point at which their lives intersect, are offering what the other person needs. So what Zenta needs is being offered by the Dutchman, what the Dutchman needs is being offered by Zenta. Um, and to tell this story of two individuals, we therefore needed to find a time and a place which would feel as real as possible, as naturalistic as possible, rather than it being in any way romantic, with a capital R, or metaphorical. Um, quite early on, I discovered that Wagner's original intention was that the piece would be set in Scotland, and it was only until only a couple of months before the premiere in 1843 that he changed the names of some of the characters and the setting to reflect a Norwegian location. So um, having discovered that there was a Scottish version and knowing we were doing it for Scottish opera, obviously it was really clear that we had to set it in Scotland and revert to the original Scottish names, uh, because that would, would be something which our audience would be able to relate to very easily. We also felt that it would be helpful to bring it forward in time, that if we set it in the 18th century when it was originally set, or the 19th century when it was written, that there would be a risk that the audience would look at it um, slightly through rose-tinted glasses, and we wanted them to be able to see people behaving on stage in a location which they could completely understand and immediately read aesthetically. How do I make sure that this piece feels as dramatic as Wagner's original intention? Well, um, first of all, I'd say that I know that nothing I do on stage will in any way match the force of power that's coming out of the pit. So I sometimes think to myself, I could kind of do whatever I liked with my performance on stage, and this piece would still feel as monumental and exciting as Wagner's original intention. However, I also have to work hard to make sure that I'm working with the music and not consciously working against it too much. Sometimes it's in fact interesting to have a juxtaposition with something happening on stage versus something that's happening in the orchestra. So for example at the end of Act 2 when the Dutchman and Centaur are singing about their love for each other, incidentally not to each other but about each other, it's the most enormous sound coming from the pit and they're talking about massive notions of love and eternity. But in fact what I've got them doing is something very small scale. They're setting up a little tea party, a little vision of domesticity for their future life together. So sometimes I feel that that contrast between the power from the pit and the smallness of something on stage is really interesting. But on the whole, my job is to try and make sure that what I'm doing is consciously supporting the libretto and the power of the music.